So we came to uh, end of uh, first unit. Uh, again, uh, we are going to discuss uh, the similar kind of uh, topic. Uh, that is, uh, if you want to analyze an algorithm, in what way or what are all the procedures that you need to follow while analyzing an algorithm? Or is there any framework available or any procedure available to analyze an algorithm? Of course, uh, there are a lot of procedures available. Uh, but the most important thing is uh, the three one thing that is shown here. First of all, you should measure the size of the input and then you should give some units for uh, uh, calculating the uh, running time. And then you uh, refer or you notate that uh, running time as well as the input size with respect to their order of growth. So these are the three important frameworks that you should uh, frame uh, while coming to analysis of algorithms. Uh, first point, measuring an input size. So how to measure the input size or is there any uh, thing is available or... So I, I already told that uh, input is in general represented by the letter N that indicates the input size that indicates it. So it may be any uh, size, uh, you may not uh, define in the N should be within this limit, it should be 10 or it should be 100 or it should be 1000, you cannot limit. But it should be a uh, size as much as possible for the given problem. If it is a shorting problem, if it is a searching problem, or if it is a locating a smallest element or uh, uh, finding the greatest of three numbers or N numbers, whatever it may be, so it depends on the problem. It depends on the problem, first of all. Uh, then, uh, while we are going to give, or uh, we are going to evaluate the size or uh, measure the size, you need to represent the size in terms of a polynomial, in terms of polynomial. So there in the polynomial, the n is nothing but the order of uh, input size, or you may say that uh, uh, order of n. That is, there are three ways you can uh, measure the input size. One is polynomial evaluation, matrix operation, graph operation. So using polynomial evaluation, the input should be represented as a polynomial in terms of a degree or a, in terms of the number of its coefficients. And the matrix operation. So what is this matrix operation? The order of matrix N, the total number of elements in the matrix N, uh, capital N, that is the uh, order of uh, matrix uh, you should say about that. So next to coming to graph operation, it requires more than one parameter to indicate the size of their inputs. That is what is that required is, uh, it needs more uh, parameter. It's okay. So when you are going to represent the graph uh, with for the uh, input size, for missing the input size, so you need more parameter. So you need to say uh, how many number of vertices your graph should have and how many number of edges your graph should have. So you should think about those aspects uh, while measuring the input size. When coming to the uh, measuring the uh, input size, the other parameters are uh, size metric uh, as well as algorithms that involving the properties of numbers. So when you are going for uh, some kind of algorithm, they say, for example, spell check algorithm. So it is uh, one which is uh, influenced by the uh, operation of the algorithm. That is when you are going for the checking uh, the algorithm, you should check the individual character as well as individual word. So the individual character uh, uh, may be uh, one, but the individual word may be depends on the number of characters available in the word. So it does the uh, main idea here, size metric. Next, uh, if you want to uh, check the numbers, say for example, uh, there are some algorithm which you will be uh, checking whether the given number is a prime number or not, add number or not, whether the given age is eligible to vote or not. So in that case, uh, you may treat uh, the number as a binary, binary number in case, in case, then you should give the number of binary bits required for uh, the representing the input. And this gives the uh, size of the input. So that is, uh, you may treat them as uh, B of uh, log 2n plus uh, 1. So that is the uh, measuring the input size when the algorithm involves uh, numbers. numbers. So what is the unit for measuring running time? So you know that in general, uh, the time can be measured using second or millisecond. But uh, what is that uh, drawback uh, is there? See, uh, you are, if you are developing a program, you can use uh, the machine that is used by everyone is not the unique one. Someone may use uh, P3 as that well is, uh, someone may uh, use uh, some advanced processors like that. So the main drawback is the speed. Next is the quality of program. So next is the compiler involved. 
so you have to think about all these things then only you can go for measuring the time so whenever you say that the measuring the running time of a program is not in second or millisecond or hour or minute so it is capital t of n capital t of n so what is that what is that capital t of n so it is nothing but the uh, time taken by the uh, algorithm or a program with respect to the number of inputs or the uh, size of the input that is n so you should uh, calculate the number of times a particular operation is executed so if you are provided with some set of codes uh, for a particular operation you should count the number of times a particular step is executed accordingly you will have a counter variable and increment the counter variable in according to the possibility of 1 2 3 4 5 6 like that mm -hmm. so then you should identify the uh, most important operation of the algorithm the basic operation so your metric that does not depends on this extraneous factor so what is that so the extraneous factor is nothing but the clock time so you should not depend on the clock time but instead you should depend on the uh, code that is given in the program so with the code uh, available in the program you should uh, refine the program and you should modify the program and you should uh, uh, do all, whatever the changes you are uh, intended to do so what is meant by basic operation see when you are uh, going through the algorithm uh, or going through the code you may come to a conclusion that okay this operation plays a vital role and uh, this operation may contribute lot to the total running time of the algorithm so that operation is going to be the uh, basic operation say for example when you take an uh, sorting algorithm Sorting algorithm. So, sorting algorithm, uh, what is the ma major operation? So, every time you should compare two elements. Every time you should compare two elements. So, based on the comparison, you can either bring the element in the front side or in the back side accordingly. So, that is the most time consuming operation. So, so, so what is the basic operation? It is the most time consuming operation. Next, you coming to the case of matrix multiplication or polynomial elimination. So, it is the one that is the multiplication. Uh, number of multiplication involved. That is number of arithmetic operations involved in order to measure the uh, running time. Right? And so, what is that framework is telling about? What is the framework? So, the framework is telling about you need to have three parameters. One is C of what is that? It is the time of execution of an algorithm basic operation. Then, number of times the operation needs to be executed. So, finally, the running time TFN. So, you need three things C of, CN, and TFN. So, C of is the uh, algorithm basic operation, number of time execution. So for, so, for execution of the single basic operation, uh, what is the thing that is. Uh, the thing that is to be carried out. So what is the thing here you need to do here is, see when you want to uh, carry out the uh, algorithmic process, um, you need to devise the three things, uh, three things as I said here. So the first thing uh, is C of C of C, say for example, say this is the framework, C is the framework. So the, the T N, T of N, if you want to mention it, the T of N should be mentioned uh, in such a way that. Uh, it should be a basic of C of number of times C of n. So this is the relation between T of n, C of. What is C of? What is C of n? That is given in the previous slide. C of, C n, T n. So this is the way. So C n is the uh, one which is uh, nothing but uh, count of the uh, operation. Count of the operation. So whenever you can uh, go through the uh, recursive uh, process, you may find such kind of expressions. You may uh, you find this kind of expressions. Let me say this, uh, T of 2n. That means if the number of input is multiplied by 2, and uh, this, what is that? Uh, so accordingly, you should multiply everything. So that is a 4. So that is the way you should uh, analyze the uh, algorithm in a standard form. So you have here. So the basic thing is how to calculate the C of it. How to calculate. So you know C of, C of is, Time of execution of an algorithm basic operation. So that is uh, that depends on the machine. But the number of times the operation needs to be executed. So that is the thing that you need to uh, do it.
so let me give an a simple example say for example if you are having a small size input small size input so just say for example the size n is varies from 10 10 to the 2 like that so log 2 n n n log so this is the standard function that's what i had yesterday class i told that there are some standard growth functions available uh, in that uh, standard uh, functions what you have to do is you can have uh, some standard function the standard function will be utilized for uh, growing the order small size inputs are not considered to distinguish the see see you not go for small size inputs so whenever it is a small size input it is not having a great impact on the calculation of the running time of an algorithm so you need to go for some larger values so the values may be uh, 100 thus that is the values may be if it is written that this nothing have an impact 100 thousand 10 thousand lakh 10 lakh like that is that is the order of growth so you if, you, if your algorithm is a slowest growing function uh, so in that then it is logarithmic function is sufficient and if your algorithm is the fastest the exponential function or factorial function likewise so the function that is shown here uh, maybe utilize it for a different growth order different growth order so when it is uh, when you want to find a qualitative difference between two different kinds of functions so what you can do is you can either increase one function log two so with the value of one and you can analyze the uh, logarithmic function or you can analyze the uh, quadratic function in fourfold so likewise you can fold the functions you can fold the functions and accordingly you can analyze the functions right so i already told that there are three case analysis worst case best case and average case so let me take and explain this with the help of an example so what is uh, average case say for example there is a sequential search algorithm that is when you are uh, given with a set of numbers and you are asked to analyze the cell of set of numbers uh, what is the thing that you need to do is you need to uh, uh, analyze the worst case best case and average case analysis so in sequential search, when you are given with a set of numbers and a key element, then you have to uh, follow a search one by one, the element one by one, and you have to find out a element which is uh, occurred uh, uh, to be picked up. That is the find out, find out. So, so in that case, what is you see, what is the worst case analysis? Uh, the number that you are going to search is available in the last question, that is n. So you have to check all the elements from the beginning to the end. That is the worst case analysis. What is the best case analysis? The number that you are going to search should be available in the first location. In the first location, if the number is available, then immediately you will get a give a hit. So that is the best case analysis. So that means it gives the fastest uh, scenario, and this is uh, some worst scenario. The worst case analysis is some worst scenario. So it's the idea. So what is that average case efficiency? Neither the worst case analysis nor its best case counterpart yields a necessary information about the result that we aware on a typical or a random input. So what is the standard assumption? The probability of a successful search is equal to p. So that is the standard. So in general, this is a standard assumption when you are going for average case. Because we may not know when we see if it is a best case, then the element that is to be searched should be in the first location. If it is a worst case, the element to be searched in the last location. What about the average case? It may be available in any random position. So you may not say that. So it is a standard assumption that you need to have a probability of a successful search. And it should be between 0 and 1. So you have two searches, successful search and unsuccessful search. That is, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, profit as well as the loss. So profit, if you represent by P, then loss, it is represented by Q, and that Q is equal to 1 minus P. That is, in general, in a probability case. So that is a C average of N. That is, uh, if you want to calculate that in C average of N. So 1 into P by N plus 2 into P by N plus so like, like that, like N into, so N into 1 minus P. So finally, you will get... Uh, P into N plus one divided by two plus N. So likewise, uh, you have to calculate if we, if you have to calculate the uh, thing. So that is you have to add both the successful search in terms of the uh, given uh, input scenario as well as the uh, unsuccessful search. And you have to add both the thing in, to produce the average case analysis. So this is not the topic of yours, amortized analysis. Let me come to the asymptotic. So you know that yesterday we saw that asymptotic notation and we come to the point where you will calculate the mm, thing. So that is uh, uh, recursive as well as that is uh, how the recurrence relation is formed. So the recurrence relation is uh, formed uh, in such a way that, see, first of all, uh, see, uh, C of n equal to, what is that uh, C of n? It is the number of times the operation has been, uh, basic operation has been executed. So it is, if it is 1, uh, if, uh, if the input size is 1. In case if the input size is n, then it is equal to n minus 1, that is worst case analysis is theta minus, theta of n. 
So what you have to do, you should calculate it for every algorithms, every step. Uh, summation i equal to one to u c t c a. So you have to take it out. So this is the way you have to take it. Uh, you have to analyze it for every cases, every cases. So for which, uh, what you have to do is, is uh, you need to have an upper limits and you need to have a lower limits, and you need to elaborate it. That is expand it, and you have to substitute. So if you go go through the general problem, is that you have to design the parameter. So what is the parameter that is uh, most responsible for uh, indicating the input size? Then you should identify the algorithm's basic operation. And you have to check whether the basic operation is executed depends on the input or not. If it is based on the input, you should calculate the average, worst, and the best cases. And we have to set up a sum uh, expressing the number of times the algorithm basic operation and using a standard formula. Standard formula in the sense standard expressions, n log n, log n. Uh, the like, like that, you have to use a standard function, you have to compute that. Uh, so that is the another problem. Another problem that is the element uniqueness problem. What is that element uniqueness problem? Is you should identify. See, they will be given some set of numbers. Maybe hundred numbers they will be provided. In hundred numbers, you will find uh, one five times, uh, two three times, uh, ten uh, five times, uh, eight uh, uh, ten times like that. So what you have to do? So you have to omit the repeated element. You have to pick only the unique element. One means one time one, two two times one, one time one two. Three means three, one time three, like that. Eight means one time. If it is, it is available in ten to fifteen times, but you have to take one time. So in that case, you need to compare the uh, number of elements. How many number of elements? N number. Of, what is the innermost uh, loop? They, that is a basic operation, single operation. It is comparison operation. It is comparing. So whether that element is appearing one more time or not. Uh, so you, it is uh, taking one element and it is comparing the element with the neighbor element to the last element. Whether the same element has been repeated or not. If not repeated, you have to print the element. If it is repeated, you have to omit the element. I have to print. So that is the uh, situation in case of uh, element uniqueness problem. And for which uh, you need to analyze the element uniqueness. Element uniqueness. Say, say for example, if you look, look at the code, so this, there are two loops. For this for loop, you have the inner loop summation. Summation j equal to i plus one to n minus one uh, is here. If you go this j equal to n minus one to n minus one, and, and outer loop is uh, summation. Summation i equal to zero to n minus two. So if you could say the end. So now you have to substitute the equation. Substitute the n minus one. It is so. So if you do this, so this is principle is called mathematical induction. This principle is substituting the values and making it a value, converting it to a notation. So this is what the recursive method. So there are two methods that is to be discussed for establishing the recursive. This is what the recursive method. So what is that? See, first of all, this uh, thing is eliminated. In order to eliminate this, what is that? The n minus one comes down. So n minus one minus this i plus one comes up comes up minus i plus one plus uh, one is already there. Now uh, you have to uh, do some modification of calculation. You have come with this. Now you have to substitute this one. So n minus one coming down and uh, n i is so after evaluating this expression, finally you got the theta n square. So in that way you need to do the uh, t of n solving problem. Likewise for all the problems. So only one problem is enough for understanding the purpose. Uh, I think I, I hope you understand the idea. If you go through the slide, I will upload this slide also. If you go through the slide, you can further understand the topic um, very well.